Welcome to the Max Machines Christmas Special. Here we've got a lovely old 1930s um, Cayley projector. Actually, Cayley comes from the original name, which was um, Abram Kershaw, and he used the um, the A K, and then it was made in Leeds, so Lee, so he became Cayley, and that was what he um, sort of sold his projectors on. But he also made other stuff, binoculars and scientific instruments. Um, very successful business, but of course the projection business was the one that really took off. And Cayley projectors um, were in most British cinemas uh, over the years, and eventually becoming part of, I think, Gil, Gil Mount or something like that, and then Rank. Uh, but certainly um, around the time of the war, uh, these would have been uh, in common place, I think, across the UK. I'm spraying it here with a bit of the old elbow grease, which I find a very gentle degreaser. Uh, but it's very effective, um, particularly uh, if you get in there and stir it up with a toothbrush or something, which I will do in a minute. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's really good stuff, elbow grease. It's not particularly expensive. Uh, obviously, I'm not sponsored to say this, um, but it just makes a change from the sort of gunk and other stuff that you can buy. Uh, I think it's just a bit gentler, particularly on older items. Uh, and it seems to work really effectively, particularly give it a little bit of a stir with a... Uh, a toothbrush this is actually my toothbrush i will be getting a new one for christmas because uh, uh, i really did need him to get those nooks and crannies there uh, so uh, doing a good good job there on the old uh, baked on grease of course these are quite oily things because uh, you know that oil um, thing there you can see is because uh, these things did of course have a top of i think it's hydraulic oil in them but it's used for um, lubricating the parts and everything so they did actually have uh, you know, quite a bit of oil inside of them and, and you know projectionists you used to have to clean things afterwards and they were known to drip a lot of them had drip trays underneath the projection heads to catch the oil so it's a lovely mechanical thing uh, that's the shutter there we'll talk about it in a bit more detail but uh, yeah lovely old projection head uh, I, I unfortunately haven't got the rest of it the rest of it would have included a, uh, a sound head which would have read uh, the soundtrack from the from the film in a very clever sort of mechanism um, that was sat underneath the projecting head. The first widely acclaimed talking movie was 1927, believe it or not, with the jazz singer. Um, but before that, there were silent movies. And the movie going was quite a social thing. People used to talk all the way through the film. Now it needs a light washing down, and that's a bit cleaner, isn't it? It's got loads of grease and dirt off it. It looks loads better. And... Uh, you know, when, when, when the uh, pit, uh, talkies came along, of course, people had to be quiet. So it went from being quite a social thing, where you had a quiet film but a noisy audience, to a noisy film and a quiet audience. So it sort of flipped over uh, from the advent of the talkies. The first system developed for getting sound uh, sort of synced with film was on a, a number of wax records, phonograph uh, type approach. The inventor of the phonograph was, of course, Thomas Edison, no less, uh, back in 1877. So it took him a while, didn't it, to start syncing it to movies. It must have put a lot of people out of a job as well, because a lot of uh, uh, theatres used to have, um, you know, play the music along with the film, uh, which a friend of mine actually gets involved with. Uh, they do some uh, black and white films where they uh, play their um, guitars and banjos and stuff, I think. It's very clever. Um, uh, if you haven't checked him out, it's very good. Uh, Jason Titley, uh, very good musician, uh, bluegrass player. Anyway, I diverge. Given the projector a good dosing of XCP1, which is a uh, water displacement, uh, but also lubricator, and uh, I think it's good on rust as well. It seems to um, soften rust quite well. So um, hopefully some of these nuts and bolts, you know, with a bit of uh, bit of lubrication, will eventually free up, and I can uh, get inside the shutter mechanism and stuff. They're pretty lock solid now. So interestingly, the shutter mechanism here is absolutely imperative to the moving picture effect. If you just move the film, uh, it would just look like a blur. And you have to, you know, precisely move the film. And that's done by a sort of shuttle system. And then the projector opens and shuts. So your eye sees one picture, then another picture. And of course, the sequential pictures then are stitched together with our brains and it forms a moving picture. Um, but, the, you know, that, that's an important part of it. Lovely little detailed screws. It's starting to clean up really nicely now. That's the old oil level meter. <laughs> So you can, that's where you drain the oil out. It was a type of hydraulic oil, I think, they used uh, more than sort of uh, engine oil. But I might be wrong there. I'm sure someone will put it in the comments who really knows these things. Say so I'm an absolute novice to projection. Uh, but I was, of course, absolutely fell for this thing. The engineering in it is just incredible. It's beautifully manufactured. 
and uh, really heavy as well. You know, I think it's got to be a good hundred weight at least uh, in weight. So they, you know, and this is only a bit of it. You know, it would have had the sound mechanism that read the sound off the film below it. Um, it would have had a big reel above it, and you know, an enormous car- carbon arc. This is where you top it up with oil. And actually, they did their own little oil funnels, which are very collectible now. Uh, but you'd have put your uh, funnel in there and uh, topped it up with oil. And the projectionist job was quite hard. You know, they had to do quite a lot of work, you know, keeping these things ticking over and keeping them clean. Uh, they would often have uh, trays underneath. Hey, look, a bit of old film. <laughs> uh, sadly, it's got nothing on it. But some of the materials like celluloid and uh, obviously with the oil and then the carbon arc lamps that used to light these projectors were quite flammable. So it's no wonder some cinemas burnt down. So there we are, looking a bit tidier now and a little bit more cared for. Back in the ranch, that's the film speed indicator. Sort of 30 frames per second uh, is quite common on YouTube. And that's why I think one of the drive wheels, see they sort of pin wheels. To... That's the film advance mechanism, I think, that holds that, moves that film one frame at a time, so crucial. I'm not sure what that is, really. It's supposedly masking, masking control. I guess it's all about that synchronising. And it's Kaylee Model 11T, little viewing window. And of course, these are... Uh, would have been lit from this end via an enormous carbon arc uh, lamp, which would have been in a great big box because, you know, it was effectively like a welding type operation. And that would have fired a huge amount of photons through here, through the film, through a lens there, down to the screen. And there's the uh, adjustment for the lens. This was the oil circulation indicator and filter area. Um, so you could ch check the oils moving around. And uh, of course, the oil uh, level down there. Nice little porthole that. The focal length on these was about 100 foot, um, typically, I'm told. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this Christmas special and the walk round the Cayley Model 11T.